Mr. Ku Bunui, Interpol President. Inspector General Yohanan Denino, Commissioner of the Israeli Police. Major General Yoav Segalovitz, Head of Investigations and Intelligence Unit of the Israeli Police. Mrs. Mireille Balistrazi, Interpol Vice President for Europe. Interpol Executive Committee Delegates from Europe and around the world, dear Chiefs of Police, dear Heads of NCB, dear Representatives of International Organizations and Observers, Mr. Pia Roulon, Special Representative of the European Union, of Interpol to the European Union, and to all of my dedicated staff from Lyon and around the world, good morning, Boker Tov. Okay, I'm very happy to be with you here today in the amazing city of Tel Aviv for this, the 41st Interpol European Regional Conference. I take this opportunity to thank our Israeli hosts for their outstanding organization and warm reception. This is the second time that I've had the opportunity to visit Israel as Secretary General of Interpol. And on both occasions, I've been most impressed by the commitment of the Israeli police to make sure that their guests, you, have a memorable and enriching visit. From the program they have planned for us this week, I can assure you that you will have an unforgettable experience here. Let me thank in particular Inspector General Yohanan Denino, Commissioner of the Israeli Police, for having offered Israel, for having offered Tel Aviv, for having offered the support of the Israeli police to host this historic conference. <laughs> Tel Aviv, as you know, is a truly fascinating city and an even more fascinating country. Just the contrast between Jaffa, one of the oldest cities in the world, with roots going back as far as 3,500 years, and the UNESCO-protected modernist white city of Tel Aviv, which contains the world's largest concentration of Bauhaus architecture, tells us just how diverse, just how rich, and indeed, this inspiring this city is. But let us reflect a bit more on the meaning of our being gathered here in the framework of the Interpol European Regional Conference. Let me reinforce and complement the insight shared with, us by, shared with us by Commissioner Dino this morning. I'm sure it hasn't escaped, and it can't escape anyone's attention, that Israel is not geographically situated within Europe. Nevertheless, because of you, Israel was overwhelmingly accepted without controversy as a member of the European region by the delegates of the 2006 Interpol General Assembly in Brazil. You've heard from Commissioner De Nino, who presented a brilliant case for why Israel should become part of the European region during the 2006, 2006 General Assembly. I vividly recall to this day how he argued, how you argued, that over two-thirds of Israel's international crime-related activities involved European countries. Israel's authorities' day-to-day -day operational cooperation was logically geared towards Europe not the Asian region of Interpol. Consequently, remaining in that region did not allow optimal working relationships within our organization for the exchange of information internationally. I recall then Major General Johan Danino's arguments in a subsequent General Assembly's decision to include Israel within the European region because of the same clarity of his arguments and the same passion and commitment that you heard again this morning underlying his and IP Israel's simple request of our organization. We must remember that Interpol's vision is to connect police for a safer world. It was therefore in all of our interests that Israel become part of Interpol's European region. We took the right decision in 2006, and because of it, we are reaping the benefits of that decision today. The fact is, that Interpol often enhances international police cooperation in very pragmatic ways, trying to identify solutions to enhance your operational capacity around the world. And while doing so, Interpol always remains fully independent and politically neutral. These are founding principles of our organization. This helps explain why Interpol and our national central bureaus are as strong and respected as they are today. The 2006 General Assembly decision that made it possible to meet here today in Tel Aviv, Israel, also highlights another important characteristic of Interpol, how we strive to adapt to our ever-changing environment. 
Our environment, as you know, is changing and changing faster than ever before. Today, with the incredible growth of information and telecommunication, telecommunication technologies available to us, people, goods, and ideas travel and affect the lives of men and women around the world with legal and illegal intentions, with unprecedented ease and speed. I certainly do not need to convince anyone in this room that crime has become inherently transnational and can touch our citizens from any country in the world where the internet is in use. In other words, the development, development of the internet continues to add a totally new dimension to crime and does so at breathtaking speed. The president spoke of the emerging impact that cybercrime has had on our citizens' lives. Let me add to what he said. This is not a crime problem that go, will go away. This is a crime problem that can only grow. From distant havens, cyber criminals defraud. They develop new underground markets for illicit trade, and they threaten critical digital infrastructures. Internet security company Symantec already estimates that the total annual cost of cybercrime at 388 billion US dollars globally, a figure bigger than the global black market, listen to this, bigger than the global black market of marijuana, cocaine, and heroin combined. What is more, the internet also facilitates the dissemination of violent, of extreme and radical ideologies, enabling radical leaders to reach friendly ears right in our communities and in all corners of the world. The heinous murder this past March of three children and a rabbi in a Jewish day school in Toulouse and of French soldiers in Montauban is one tragic example. We're honored that Mr. Frederick Pechner, the Director General of the French National Police, will tell us in greater detail about the case, about how it was investigated and about how the person responsible was brought to justice. The so-called donor murders that saw right-wing extremists kill nine immigrants and one policewoman in Germany between 2000 and 2006 is another example. And again, we are similarly honored that Mr. Jörg Zerker, president of the German BKA, will make a presentation on this case immediately after Mr. Peschnar's presentation. Thank you for coming. In addition, the challenges posed to law enforcement by the increasing transnational nature of crime, the rise of cybercrime, and the worrying subterranean radicalization through the internet come at a time when our economies are struggling to emerge from a global crisis, thus putting even greater pressure on our already limited resources. As the world's largest international police organization with 190 member countries, meeting these challenges has driven Interpol to strengthen its cooperation with other international organizations working against crime in order to pool our resources and achieve a greater combined impact. The partnership between Interpol and Europol in fighting maritime piracy achieves exactly that goal. Taking advantage of Interpol's global reach and of Europol's extraordinary analytical capability, the two organizations obtained impressive results, including the successful investigation on the hijacking of Belgian flagship Pompeii by Somali pirates, which led to the identification and arrest of two individuals following positive fingerprint matches. Interpol's maritime piracy team is also about to launch an historic partnership with NATO, becoming the first law enforcement organization with whom NATO will share operational information. Being given access to this information will, for criminal investigative purposes will assist all of our member countries in keeping their citizens safer. Interpol's cooperating with Frontex in securing European borders. The latest example is Operation Hammer, which took place this past November in the framework of which Interpol provided its support to Frontex by making its stolen and lost travel document database available at Italian airports for special Frontex operation targeting the use of fraudulent documents to enter the EU. In parallel, we are working on cooperation agreements with the European External Action Service and with Eurojust to strengthen our ability to work together. Finally, I recently met with Mr. Giovanni Kessler the Director General of the European Anti-Fraud Office, OLAF, and will soon meet with Mr. Cunio Mikiroria, the Secretary General of the World Customs Organization, to further reinforce our cooperation in the area of combating the trafficking in illicit goods by transnational organized crime groups. 
Interpol, as you see, remains aggressive in getting additional sources of revenue to fund activities of common interest. One example was a reach out to our member countries not currently facing the economic crisis, such as Singapore, Canada, and Qatar, and to ask them to support Interpol and our activities in substantial ways. This support will assist us in opening the state-of-the-art Interpol Global Complex for Innovation within budget and on time in Singapore in 2014. The IGCI will include innovation, research, and digital security component that will develop innovative cooperative solutions to tackle cybercrime globally. It goes without saying that the Interpol Global Complex for Innovation will look forward to working hand in hand with a future European Cybercrime Center to be housed in Europol. Of course, we're also reaching out to the private sector for financial support, as has also been recommended by our General Assembly since as far back as 1998. In this regard, I've recently met with the representatives of manufacturers of generic pharmaceuticals in India and with several heads of major pharmaceutical companies from around the world to obtain support for activities in combating the trafficking and counterfeiting of illegal pharmaceuticals worldwide. We're also at an advanced stage in negotiating with a major tobacco manufacturing company with the objective of launching a groundbreaking 10-year program to fight the international trafficking in all illicit goods to include tobacco products. Trafficking in illicit goods is, of course, not a new phenomenon, and Interpol has been active in this crime area for quite some time through its intellectual property crime and counterfeit medical products units. But we are increasingly worried to see the growing links between this criminal activity and organized crime, and indeed terrorism, and the loss of precious tax revenue by our member countries during the economic crisis faced by many of them. The reason is simple. This criminal activity generates enormous revenues with relatively small risks of getting caught or being prosecuted, making it appealing for larger scale criminal organizations, including historical crime syndicates and terrorist organizations eager to improve their cash flows. It should not come as a surprise then to see a major syndicate like the Sacra Corona Unita in Italy involved in cigarette smuggling across the Adriatic Sea, or financial proceeds from counterfeit brake pads earmarked to support Hezbollah in Lebanon. I believe that it is the right time to demonstrate our long-term commitment to fighting this criminal activity and to hit hard at transnational criminals and terrorists involved in this criminal business. Trafficking in, trafficking in illicit goods can be a threat to the rule of law, to economies worldwide, it can cause a major loss in tax revenues for governance. It causes harm to health of patients and citizens, as I just explained, to global security through its links with transnational organized crime and terrorist organizations. We must and can do more to combat it in a sustained way. This upcoming July, I will participate in a summit hosted by Google Ideas and the Council of Foreign Relations in Los Angeles where I will lead one of the discussion panels on the theme of disrupting and exposing illicit networks. At this event, and if all goes according to plan with our private sector partners, in this case Google, we will also unveil the Interpol Global Register's new, new tool that Interpol is developing in cooperation with Google to help law enforcement and also the general public differentiate between legitimate products and illegitimate products. I can tell you that as your Secretary General, one of the highlights for me was to have Google contact us and say that they wanted Interpol to participate in this initiative. And to have Google Ideas say that at no cost to Interpol, they would see what they could do to show us how technology can be used to enhance your ability to keep your citizens and your citizens' businesses safer and more secure than they otherwise would be. Dear colleagues, the times we're living in are very challenging, both in terms of security and crime threats, as well as the financial resources available to fight and protect our citizens. Interpol is adapting its business model to these threats and the economic environment in which we find ourselves today. We're forging new partnerships and developing innovative tools to assist you better in fighting crime while remaining true to our principles of independence and neutrality, and without increasing your mandatory statutory contributions.
Our strategy is not only consistent with our priorities and will contribute to keeping your citizens safe and secure in the 21st century, but it was, will also minimize the financial burden on your NCBs and member countries. As I view the highlights of what we've achieved and where we've been over the years in the European region, as reflected in the video before my remarks, as I realize that we are holding our 41st European Regional Conference here in Tel Aviv, Israel, I'm reminded that at Interpol, no challenge is too great for us to overcome in order to make the world a safer place. I would like to just take a moment and ask my staff to stand up and turn and be recognized. Please, 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 please. And now it'll be my honor to lead the round of applause to the people that made this possible. Johanna and I, I will close in, in making a promise that I make at all regional conferences and at all general assemblies when they're hosted in such beautiful countries, and in this case, in Israel. We will do our best to make sure that as many people who came here will leave with us eventually. God bless you all. Thank you very much.